Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at some, some basic examples of um, finding these antiderivatives or integrating uh, these functions. And so remember the rule. The rule is always to add one and divide now. And from the last video, we saw our properties. Uh, by our properties, we can pull constants outside of integrals. We can also um, distribute across pluses and minuses. Uh, so in theory, in theory, this is also the same thing as 3 times the integral of x to the fourth dx plus 5 integral x dx minus 6 integral dx. Now, much like the limit laws, rarely will I ever do this. Um, it's just something that I want you to see and it, it can be done. Uh, another really important thing that I want to point out again is every time you have an integral symbol, you have this d whatever, in this case x. Okay, so now we've got three smaller separate problems to work. And we'll start with this first one. We're going to add one and divide. So that's going to be three times uh, one fifth x to the fifth. Then we'll have plus five, add one and divide. So that's going to be times one half x squared. And then finally, you can see here the integral symbol and the dx. Like our first example, these two things do away with each other, and we have a minus 6x that's left. Now, let's also not forget to put this plus c there at the end, and we'll go ahead and clean it up briefly. This is 3 fifths, x to the fifth, plus 5 halves, x squared, minus 6x, plus c. So there is our, our final answer now for the integral of the given function. But before we move on, it's really important, at least for a few examples, to check our answer. To check our answer means if we take the derivative of this, do we come up with that right there? So if I come down here now and I take the derivative, when I multiply by 5 down and I subtract 1, that's going to give me a 3x to the 4th. If I take the derivative of this, multiply down, subtract 1, that's going to give me my plus 5x. Similar, now we've got our minus 6, and the derivative of the constant is 0, so it matches up perfectly. So we know we did this correctly, and we're ready to move on to the next one. Okay, so for the next one, um, this one we're going to have to, to treat a little differently in the respect of we were not quite set up in a position where we can simply add one and divide. So we're going to need to manipulate it a little bit algebraically. Uh, which is fine. So this would be 2x to the 3 halves minus x to the negative 1 half. You can now see we're in a place where we're adding 1 and dividing. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so for our first one, uh, we are going, and I'm not going to split this one apart. Like I said in the last example, it's great. You can do it if you want to, but I'm just going to go term by term through this now at this point. So for our first one here, I'm going to add 1. So 3 halves plus 1 is going to be 5 halves. And so I'm dividing by 5 halves, which is the same thing as multiplying by 2 fifths. Okay, so follow me on that. Uh, so when I added 1 here, I got 5 halves. That's this thing here. But when I divided by it, I don't want to put a complex fraction down here. So dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So now I'm going to have 2, this 2 and this 2 are the same, times 2 fifths. <clears throat> and then moving on to the next one, here, if I add 1 and divide, negative 1 half plus 1 is a positive 1 half. Dividing by a positive 1 half would be the same thing as multiplying by 2. So I've got my negative 2, x to the 1 half, followed by my plus c. So cleaning this up briefly is this thing. And then I would also want to come back through in, uh, in this particular case. It's very simple, so it never hurts. I'm going to go ahead and check it by taking the derivative. So when I take the derivative and multiply this down, and I subtract 1, and then similar here, and I subtract 1, you can see how it works out perfectly. We get our 2x to the 3 halves minus x to the negative 1 half. And now we've confirmed that this 
is the antiderivative of this. All right, so here's the third example now of uh, one that you might encounter in this section. And so similar to the last one, we're going to need to manipulate it algebraically before we can just dive in and start adding one and dividing. <clears throat> and so it looks like in the numerator, I'm going to have to expand this out. So that's going to be a 9x squared minus 24x plus 16, all divided by x to the fourth. Let's not forget our dx. Now I'm going to take this x to the fourth, and I'm going to divide it up into each term individually. When I do that, that gives me a 9x to the negative second minus 24x to the negative third plus 16x to the negative fourth. Again, my goal is to put it in a form to where I can add one and divide straight through. Now, uh, I'm ready to go, looks like. For this first guy, if I add one, that's going to be a negative one. If I divide by the negative one, I've got a negative nine, x to the negative first. Similar on this next one, <clears throat> this gives me a negative two when I add one. When I divide by a negative two, I get a plus 12, x to the negative second. And then for that third term, if I add one, I'll get a negative 16 over three, x to the negative third plus c. Now, I'll leave it up to you to take a few minutes, pause the video, take the derivative of this to find out that in fact it would give us what we see up here from above. But once, you do, once you've once you done that, you've got your antiderivative ready to go. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the antiderivatives of our trig functions. So don't pay any attention to the blue stuff uh, on the bottom. <clears throat> But for now, I want to focus on what I have in black on top, the ddx sine of x equaling cosine of x. So we know that that's true. We've proven that. We've talked about it. We've used it a bunch. So we know that that derivative is good. So what I'm going to do is actually something similar I did uh, on the first part of the video, uh, I believe the last video. I'm going to move this dx to the other side here, which is going to leave me with the derivative d of sine x equaling cosine x dx. Then I'm going to integrate both sides. On the left, the antiderivative and the derivative are opposites. So on the left, we have this sine of x. And on the right, we have this integral of cosine of x dx. So what this says is formally, the integral of cosine is equal to sine of x plus c. Can't forget about the plus c there. So now when we integrate cosine, we know where it's going to go. Similar on the next one, I'm going to go ahead and move the dx to the other side. So I've got my negative sine of x here uh, with a dx. I'm going to go ahead and integrate both sides. On the left, that goes away. I have cosine all by itself. And on the right, if I just want to get the integral of sine of x like I did on the last one, this negative, remember, it can come outside of the integral symbol. And so if I now divide it off, I get a negative cosine of x equaling the integral of sine of x dx. So formally now, the integral of sine is going to equal negative cosine of x plus c. So that's how we come up with the integral for sine is based upon the, obviously the derivative. So I don't feel like I need to do that for all of these other ones. You certainly can just start off with the ddx of whatever trig function you want and then you can manipulate it the same way. But the big takeaway from this is for these trig uh, antiderivatives it's, it's going to be what you know and what you don't know. For example, we know, we know the integral of secant squared. We know it's going to be tangent because when I take the derivative of tangent, it gives me secant squared. But, for example, we don't yet know the integral for just secant all by itself. If I gave you the integral of secant and I told you to do it, we're not at a point to do that yet. And honestly, you won't do that even until Calc 2. Similar with these other ones. You know the integral of secant tangent. You know the integral of cosecant cotangent. You know the integral of cosecant squared because those were the derivatives of our trig functions. 
And so we know some very, what comes across initially is some very strange uh, trig functions. And we don't know the integral of some very basic trig functions like secant. Tangent's another one. We don't know the integral for tangent just yet because we haven't gotten uh, to how to do that yet. Another calc to integral. So pay close attention to what you know, okay? Pay real close attention to the ones you know, the ones you don't know. And then uh, from there, we'll, it'll help us manipulate our functions so that we can better, uh, better integrate more directly. Okay, so for this example, uh, we're dealing with trig functions, and again, the goal is going to be to manipulate it in such a way that we get it to a, a function we recognize and we can integrate. So to do this, the first thing that I would do is actually factor out the one half, kind of get it out of the way. Then I would take that cosine in the denominator and I would divide it up into the numerator. Uh, when I do that, that's actually going to give me, using my, my little bit of trig there, a little few identities, a secant squared theta plus one. All right, so when I move this over, that's gonna be secant over cosine, flip the cosine around, turns it into secant squared, and then when I divide this in there, I get my one. And so I'll finish that step off with a d theta. And now secant squared is one of the ones that we know. Uh, so, uh, drew, uh, excuse me, the integral of secant squared would be tangent of theta. And then, if you remember, the integral for 1 is just going to be the plus theta now, finishing off with a plus c. So again, feel free to, to stop and, and check it. Uh, if I take the derivative of this guy, this guy here, that's going to give me my secant squared. When I take the derivative of that, that's going to give me my plus 1. So remember, manipulate until you get down to something that you know what the antiderivative is. And in this case, we were able to do both of them uh, by one little step of dividing like we did to start.